because still always room for improvement in many aspects. In my phone, I use the Alipay Hong Kong. It's easy to pay everything. It has a capability, but it hasn't achieved it yet. I think the bus system is pretty, you know, advanced. Yeah, in Japan, in a lot of restaurants, you give the food through robots, you know? And here, I, I don't know if I can find this one. If you talk about payments, there is too many ways to pay in Hong Kong. It's a, like Alipay, Cash, Octopus, a credit card, MasterCard, Visa. I mean, there is too many for me. Yeah? So sometimes there is like, if you go to taxis, they only accept cash. If you go to some places, they ju just only have pay. Alipay or WeChat, which is for me too complicated. It should have like one and should work for everything, you know? For me, it's not very smart to use like seven, ten, twenty different of payments. I think Hong Kong's good. I think also it's getting better with uh, being able to pay like with Visa on the MTR and things like that yeah. as well. So you don't, everything being touch and go and tap and go more, now. More so. places are now doing contactless payments. Uh, but I think Hong Kong, in terms of e-payment, uh, we're pretty advanced, except with respect to uh, taxi. I think it's one area that I, I've always a bit of uh, issue with, so I think uh, we can do something about taxi e-payment. First of all, GPS works terribly here. It's not, it's lawless. The buildings interfere, so Google Maps and other uh, platforms don't work particularly well. Um, the other thing is, is that the investment hasn't been made um, enough to fully integrate the city to be qualify a smart city. I'd like to see um, the small businesses, um, more in partnership with, with maybe the government or maybe the big telecom companies to join the consumer, uh, to help the consumer understand what benefits there are in a smart city. Maybe the younger consumers also understand that already, but people of my generation may not be so easily able to understand it. It enables um, the, the whole population to access um, services and entertainment and leisure and business things so much more easily. Well, it has both its positives and its negatives. I mean, the, the more connected we are, the less privacy we have, right? So it depends on whether you want convenience or privacy. But you should be able to opt in and opt out. It's good when you, when you get everything is available in your hands. And it's bad when you walk around and you see people just like Block facing the phone all the time. When I see that people like they don't enjoy their life, they're just facing the phone all the time. And when you're walking around, like, that's not good. I think that is a good thing because there's so many people here and you need things to be very efficient. So it saves a lot of time for a lot of people. I think it's a double edged sword because um, you do have like privacy issues when it comes to like it being a smart yeah. city because you know there are cameras everywhere now and then like face facial recognition is also a thing. So Basically, they know your every move, every moves, like whoever they are. So, I think you know there are like downsides as well. And if you are, if you grew up in a small city like I did, then um, it's gonna be hard for you to navigate in like other less advanced cities. So that's like, I think definitely there are good things, but there are some things to you know be wary about. It's a top the city for me, Hong Kong. I live in Argentina. I live in, in Buenos Aires. This is another world, you know. It's, it's all it's easy for us. In Argentina, you know, it's not easy, but we need to improve there. <laughs> we have another similar application. is Mercado Pago. It's similar to Alipay, but you can pay with Mercado Pago. For example, the transportation, you cannot pay in a lot of restaurants, you know, we need to use your PC card. But here, you only use the mobile. You have everything you, okay. you need. Hong Kong is much bigger in terms of uh, popularity and, and populace as well. I think Singapore is now leading in, in, in most of the technology. But I'm, I'm sure you will catch up very fast. I live in China right now, and um, you can do everything on your phone there these days. And I wouldn't know how to use any of that. I, and, and the stuff that's available to me in China is blocked for a foreigner. I can't use most of those things. I can't order my train tickets online or anything like that that I'm aware of. I, I've tried and it failed. Hong Kong, I don't know. I think it's a lot more open. It's a much more international city, much more international minded. 
So I think it's not as tightly controlled as, as mainland China. And so I think things are easier here. I come from a much smaller city than Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is way more advanced than where I'm from. I think Amsterdam was pretty advanced, but I would say overall Hong Kong is like definitely like up there. Uh, I'm on the board of a company in China, uh, so I go to Shanghai uh, most often. I don't see a big difference between Shanghai and, and Hong Kong. I think they're probably on a par. I lived in Jakarta a couple of years ago, part, uh, part of the Philippines last year. Uh, and recently in Chengdu, I used to live in Guangzhou and Zhuhai for, for many years, Shanghai, Seoul, Tokyo, uh, Saigon, KL, and they're all different. And the technology it hasn't always been on pace of other places. I just adapt where I go. Japan's pretty high tech everywhere and seems to be connected. I think Hong Kong's good. I mean, I've been in, in different city around the world, but I think one of the best I've been, it was Hong Kong, to be honest. Everything is perfect. Like, as I told you, service, um, transportation, government, um, uh, everything it is easy going. Whatever document I need, and boom, in five minutes, I can have it. It's different than other cities and clean, safe, very friendly people here. So I've been in that business for a long time in Hong Kong as well and everything is perfect. So I have no issue. I think comparably Singapore uh, is probably a little better than us. But um, uh, with other countries, I would say probably Japan, Korea, uh, we are on like kind of same level. So it would be flawless, seamless technology interface for the individual citizen, as well as for transport, for corporates, for everyone. But right now, there's a bifurcation. Most people on the street don't have access to smart city technology. So I think Hong Kong has great connectivity, like your train, your tram, your ferry. We don't have this in Dubai. This is really good in Hong Kong. In my phone, I use the Alipay Hong Kong. It's easy to pay everything, train, bus, taxi, food. This is a good, and the Wi-Fi is yeah. good too. I think the metro is really good. Yes. Uh, it's very efficient. I think yeah. the bus system is pretty, you know, advanced. Because they have like predictions of like when the bus is going to be at the yes. station. And it's usually pretty accurate. So I would say, yeah, that's like pretty advanced. As far as being smart, maybe yeah, Hong Kong's probably up there with the applications and stuff. I think it's on, on a journey to get there because the basic infrastructure exists. We have high-speed internet, we have 5G, which is pretty ubiquitous, and uh, we have plenty of technical expertise. We have the financial sector, which is usually very at the forefront of uh, the electronic uh, communication. So I think we have the building blocks I'm not sure that we're joined up between the different sectors. I can use my octopus card. I can use it anywhere. And I've been to other smart cities and the same thing happens there. It is a smart city for being it like convenient for like the transportation and stuff. I think in general, they update things very fast. Although during the COVID period, they were blocked by so many years and most countries has already opened up. But they catch up really fast. Especially I'm very impressed at the, at the airport when the gantries and getting through and when you need to find out stuff. The immigration are superb, so I'm, I'm impressed with it, yeah. It's not like the city bus app where you can see where all the uh, buses are and when they're going to be wherever and the MTR just runs so like efficiently. You've got like government Wi-Fi everywhere, yeah, so you can, yeah. You can basically run everything off your phone. It just makes life easier. It means that especially in a city sort of like as hot as Hong Kong as well you don't yeah. have to leave until right before you're gonna get on your bus it means that if you're visiting you don't have to buy a sim card because there's wi-fi everywhere so the access is really good Hong Kong has come a long way honestly um, I just went down to the post office of uh, GPO in Central to uh, try to sign up for the e certification which is touring on the IM smart application and it went really smoothly in many ways, Hong Kong is quite smart in terms of uh, being a smart city from transportation, e-payment, a lot of uh, online application. And I've been in Hong Kong for like 19 years right now. Everything is smart here, like, you know, um, technology, um, 
all that's what government have done to the street, it's all perfect. Like, you know, uh, transportation, the, let's say, talk about the escalator. One of the longest escalators in the world. We start from down the beach to the top of Mid Label, I mean, top of Hong Kong, so it's really smart.